fortunate thing about coming third is most of this has been said. Um, however, I will skip over some, but I, my, my charge this morning is to, to anchor health. Um, and this is the slide that I really wanted. I actually think of health as cross-cutting once we start talking about older persons. Because you're talking about functional capacity. We're not simply talking about health here in terms of um, a, a disease or an illness. But there are the issues around functional capacity. The MDGs at no point really making up, putting up emphasis on disability. And disability in all of its forms, um, whether it's simply a knee and simply needing a, a rail. So there are things that I think that, as, as um, Jessica said, we want to see how we can go forward in the next five years, that we have to work with what we have. We're not going to get a new MDG, although we want one. Um, where can we get indicators? Where can we put things in? Where can the NGO committee agitate? Where can all of us go back to our governments and agitate? But the issues around health are, are really cross-cutting. You can't talk about medications and health services without talking about poverty. You can't talk about caregiving without talking about the older woman. And, and this is not to negate the three health um, MDGs that are there, because clearly we talk about life course, and clearly those three MDGs are important to get us to have the argument or the discussion that we're now having. Um, and therefore, it can't be viewed in isolation. Health is very much a part of the social and environment determinants, and it's very much the foundation of the active aging approach that WHO has been promoting. Um, we've talked about this already this morning, but I really wanted to put it up because health is so central to independence and self-fulfillment and dignity. It's also influenced, and I think this is where we have a chance and an opportunity as we look on the way forward. Health is very much influenced by the attitude of the individual, um, and therefore how a person's view of health is critical. We've talked about the issue around human rights, and I'll skip this. But it's also important to point out that the, the, the theme of, of um, 1999 and also 2003 here, adding life to years, is also important. The M3, the gender and health, I need to make a plea for older men. Um, there's a lot said about older women, but we all know, those of us in healthcare, that men simply don't utilize healthcare services. And therefore, as we look to improve the gender issues, let us remember older men. Education and health also. Older people need to, to have health literacy. And therefore, there are ways that we can include as we go forward. How do we improve the health literacy? All of this has been said. The poverty reduction strategies, of, I think it's been said, the importance of pensions and, and social protection. Equally important is remembering that you have older persons that can be part of existing poverty reduction strategies. You can give an older person a sewing machine and then they can start to do things. I have families where the older person with a sewing machine has become the major income earned. Let us not forget it's not. Pensions are important. Older people can contribute to actual poverty reduction strategies. Disability, um, we need, I, I can't leave without speaking about the disability. Not only are disabled persons now becoming old, but older persons with the sense um, deficits and with the joints and the osteoporosis also contribute. There is much that can be done by joint, certainly for those of us in smaller countries, joining the disabled and the older communities in the lobby efforts. Two voices are better than one. When I speak at home, I know my disabled community is 200,000. I know my elderly community is almost 300,000. There's probably some overlap, but it sounds good when I say I'm speaking for 500,000. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this, the environment. We can't talk about access. And this is why I say that this is, health is so cross-cutting. We talk about climate change, but when we talk about the active aging approach, and somebody mentioned accessible health services, that simply, in, for some of us in health, can simply mean a ramp. It can simply mean um, rates. And therefore, we need to think of accessibility as we argue for the way forward for the MDGs, not simply in whether a health center or a health service exists, but can it be used by the older person? 
I need to get to each other. And we talk about age friendly. A lot has been said about the older person as a caregiver. I also want to mention the older person as a sexual being. Much of the information on HIV is targeting younger persons. I come from a country where the grandmother in particular is the main source of comfort to a younger person. Many children get HIV information in school and go home and discuss it with grandma, not their mother. And therefore the grandmothers in the Caribbean need as much information about HIV as the children themselves. And there are many myths and stereotypes and therefore the cross-cutting um, gender issue or culture issue becomes important. But there are very many misconceptions. The point is that many persons are now becoming old with HIV and we do not know enough about the comorbidities of old age. I come from a country where 60% of women have a chronic disease. Now, what is the role of HIV on top of that? I come from where we, when we were looking at dementia, I routinely screen for syphilis. When am I going to get into the habit of routinely screening for HIV? But I think a lot of work in this area on HIV needs to go beyond the caregiving. And I'm not negating the caregiving in any way. Don't, don't get me wrong. I just want to introduce a new component. Therefore, more is needed on supporting older persons and insured. So the obstacles and the gaps are that the MDGs are too narrow in their focus. We can't change them. So how are we going to get persons to in, um, include um, indicators, etc., that um, can get us to help focus. Mainstream, we've talked about, we've been talking about mainstreaming since 1999. It's time to do it. So, the way forward is to build on the success. Let us acknowledge that there are successes with limitations and find out how can we infiltrate, how can we get in there and put older persons, the voice of older persons, in there. Um, I want to strongly urge the human rights groups to promulgate the Convention on the Rights of Human, um, the Rights of Older Persons, and to get all of us on board. Thank you.